Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy. Welcome all those who are joining us virtually um, through our live stream. Welcome, everyone. It's our privilege we get the opportunity to worship God in the most perfect way possible, which is through the holy sacrifice of the Mass. We cannot take that for granted. So let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we will celebrate a vote of Mass in honor of Holy Mary, disciple of the Lord. Let us call to mind our sins now and reflect the times when we have failed to live our discipleship as the best we can, when we have fallen short. In God's mercy now, let us ask him for his pardon and his peace. Lord Jesus, you chose to be born in the immaculate womb of your virgin mother. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, through her intercession, you manifested your glory at the wedding feast of Cana. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, while dying on the cross, you chose to give Mary to be our mother mediatrix and advocate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, through the Blessed Virgin Mary, you have shown us the example of a disciple who is faithful to the words of life. Open our hearts to receive your saving word so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, it may speak to us in our daily lives and bring forth a rich harvest of holiness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Come, let us return to the Lord. It is he who has rent, but he will heal us. He has struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days. On the third day, he will raise us up to live in his presence. Let us know, let us strive to know the Lord. As certain as the dawn is, is his coming and his judgment shines forth like the light of day. He will come to us like the rain, like spring rain that waters the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your piety is like a morning cloud, like the dew that early passes away. For this reason, I smote them through the prophets. I slew them by the words of my mouth. For it is love that I desire, not sacrifice and knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. It, it is, is mercy, mercy I, desire I desire and not, and not sacrifice. sacrifice. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. It, it is, is mercy, mercy I, desire I desire and not and sacrifice. sacrifice. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. It is, it is mercy, mercy I, I desire, desire and not, not sacrifice. sacrifice. Be bountiful, O Lord, to Zion in your kindness. By rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, then shall you be pleased with due sacrifices, burnt offerings, and holocausts. It, it is, is mercy, mercy I, desire I desire and not, and not sacrifice. sacrifice. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the, t <laughs> but the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want to approach the reflection on today's gospel in this manner, and that's by bringing something to light that I think we are becoming more familiar with in our culture, and especially the media's reporting on this. They did so last May, speaking about the mental health crisis among teens, young people, and especially how social media poses a great risk at this. And they are speaking of this, and actually this is uh, the Surgeon General last year saying, we're in the middle of a youth mental health crisis, and I'm concerned that social media is contributing to the harm that kids are experiencing. And it says, the report cites several ways in which social media may cause harm to youth mental health, noting that the adolescent years are a particularly vulnerable time for brain development it details studies that found correlations between social media use and depression and anxiety, as well as poor sleep, online harassment, and low self-esteem, especially among girls. And um, what's going on here is it involves something that we get, can get easily caught up in as humans, and that's something called the snare of compare, the snare of compare. What does that mean? Well, let me first say that everything we do is for the sake of happiness. This is Aristotle. This is St. Thomas Aquinas. This makes sense. No one wants to be unhappy. God has not made us like this. We cannot, we are motivated by the desire of happiness. Everything we do is for the sake of happiness. And um, Father Robert Spitzer, he's a Jesuit, recently put together a very nice um, a, a little thing on happiness. And he noted in studying like philo the philosophers of the past and you know, some of the theologians like Thomas Aquinas has come up with like four levels of happiness where we can find happiness in four ways. Like one way is through material or physical um, happiness, like through pleasure, right? We, 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 can, we can have a type of happiness when we eat an ice cream cone. Now, mind you, happiness is when we have our desires satisfied. So, and we all desire what is good. So, an ice cream cone is, is, is a good, it's a physical good. It brings me pleasure, I eat it, I feel pleasure. Ta-da, I'm happy for a moment, then it goes. Well, the second level of happiness deals with our, um, our own psychological happiness. As we develop and we discover our own goodness, um, we have a sense of, of of happiness, like with who we are. And sometimes that happiness develops through comparison. I compare myself to other people. And there's a naturalness to that, where I, I can, you know, go back to your grade school years. We learn how to, um, to understand that this person is smarter than I am. This person is a better athlete than I am. Or maybe I'm a better musician than they are. 
You know, it works both ways. But we discover kind of where we fit in the social construct of things. But through that, we can, you know, well, let, let, me, let me finish the other levels and I'll, I'll go back to the comparison one. But, you know, the third level of happiness is when we learn how to help others, right? To, to, to do works of charity, works of mercy to others. And then the ultimate and the deepest form of happiness is when we satisfy our um, uh, transcendental desires, our desires for the true, the good, the beautiful, which ultimately can only be, which can only happen in God, who is truth itself, goodness itself, beauty itself, right? And so when we satisfy our desires for those things through our communion with God, then we reach the deep, most lasting happiness that we can have. But let's go back to number two, which is this kind of like the comparative game that we can play. A lot of, a lot of people, it's hard to get beyond that one, you know, because a lot of people can tend to find their own happiness in comparison to another person. And the reason why that is, is because when you, when you try to find happiness in comparison with somebody else, then you're, you're, you're seeking kind of like an affirmation about yourself. You know, I'm a better athlete than they are, so I'm cool, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I can hit more threes, I can dunk a ball, I've got moves, I can jack a baseball 400, yard, you know, 400 feet, whatever, you know. Um, so, you know, I'm smart, I'm a 1200 SAT person, whatever, and, and all of a sudden your value becomes based on your external activity. And you, you verify that value based on comparison. And so that, that when, when you get involved with this comparison game, you're really left with, you, you have three options, right? You, you, if, if you compare yourself unfavor, or favorably over against somebody else, it leads to what? Pride, right? If you compare yourself unfavorably to, to somebody, else it leads to envy or jealousy if you compare yourself in a way that like I can never become what they are you know I, I, I no matter how hard I'm trying I'm no, I can't get there it, it leads to like discouragement and so you can see where when, when you are a younger person and you're trying to establish that your core identity as a, as a human being you're trying to discover your value and worth again oftentimes it's because we're broken, we, we, we tend to do this. We go outside of ourselves to find our value and worth based on, who, based on what we can do, right? It's an external pursuit of something that's interior. And so when you're in that social media environment, and, and, when, and think about, I guess, from our own experience before social media, this is, the, this is how it was, you know, when you're in school growing up, you know, it's all about, it's the external, right? Am I good looking? Am I strong? Am I pretty? You know, um, do I have the right shoes? Do I have the right pants? Am I wearing the cool jacket? Right? This, these are all the games that we play as, as adolescents. And now imagine this on a social media experience. Right? Because when you're, when you're before social media, and you're kind of going through this, it was, you know, you had these experiences, but, you know, it's, just kind of like contained within your own little sphere of influence there and it just kind of happens and it goes away. But think about social media now. With social media, it's, it, it's, it, it's, perm it's out there. Like to a, to a whole, uh, you know, it, it's out there to the social media audience, which is hundreds or even thousands. And when you put your stuff out there, Right, you can be accepted, affirmed, yay, you're cool, or rejected, you're stupid, you're ugly, right? And the thing is, it stays there, and everybody here, and everybody sees it, and and whatever, or or you're just kind of looking at social media, and you and you see all these posers out there posing for these pictures, and you're like, man, you know, and they act like, and and some and. And some may 
present like I've got all these friends, you know, with these pictures. You see all these, they're smiling and with their friends or whatever, or they're on some vacation with their family or maybe with their friends. And the comparison thing go, goes again, right? The, the comparison thing click, clicks in. I, you know, I don't have as many friends as they have. I'm not as happy as they are, you know? It happens. It happens. And the interesting thing, just to close this, at least on this part here with the social media, with, with kids, this is harder because their brains are starting to develop. And let me just point this out. This is from the American Psychological Association. They say, between the ages of 10 and 12, changes in the brain make social rewards, compliments on a new hairstyle, laughter from a classmate, start to feel a lot more satisfying. Makes them happy. Specifically, receptors for the happy hormones oxytocin and dopamine multiply in a part of the brain called the ventral striatum, making preteens extra sensitive to attention and admiration from others. All right. And um, anyway, you can see where the whole social media experience creates this um, instability in a, in, in a, in a teenager's identity, right? And so why, why am I saying this? Because at the heart of today's gospel is exactly this reality. It's exactly this reality. Because the Pharisees are posers. They are focused on their, uh, everything about them is exterior. Remember, they think they are cool daddies because they see themselves as the standard of all holiness. And Pharisees is the word that means separate. So they, they strive for this kind of like purity, ritual purity or this following of the law, which involves like separating themselves from people who aren't pure. Keep them away from me, man. <laughs> They're not cool. They're not holy. I am because I follow the law to the T. I'm cool, man. And so, they, 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 they start to, like, if you will, affirm their own, th them, themselves. I am holy, they are not. I'm going to be saved, they are not. And so you see it in the prayer. You see it in the prayer. The Pharisees, they are about, like, look at me, look at what I do. Thank God I'm not like them. Thank God I'm not like them. And, that, and that's the, the Pharisees are caught in the snare of compare because, but they're, they're caught in the pride aspect. They're, they're like looking at themselves and thinking they're holier than thou, that they're greater than they are. So pride is, pride is, is um, overestimating your excellence, overestimating yourself. That's what pride does. And, and, and when you're caught up in the comparison game, this is what happens. And so, anyway, at the heart of it is, well, let me, let, let's get now to the tax collector, right? So the tax collector raises his eyes up to heaven and says, all he says is like, and then tax collector recognizes his, like, I'm not, I don't have it all together. So he raises his eyes to heaven and say, God, I don't have it all together. Be merciful for me, a sinner. I need your help. Right? So, so what, you, what, what you have here are, are two people who relate to God in different ways. The Pharisees relate to God in a way that they're basically like, they're kind of like, I don't need you, God. <laughs> I've achieved holiness on my own effort. And th this, they're, they're kind of affirming themselves. And in that way, they become blinded to the truth of who they are. Whereas the tax collector, they have a, 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 you know, humility is truth. They have a more truthful evaluation of themselves. Yeah, I'm a sinner. And God, I need your help. How do we tie all this stuff together? It's this, really. Is that, you know, at, at the core of our being, and again... We need to have a sense of our goodness. 
And I think this is why it's hard for us to acknowledge our sinfulness. I think that's why it's hard for the Pharisees to acknowledge their own sinfulness so they could be open to Jesus. They, they, they did not want to, um, they, they found their worth in their exterior observances of the law and what they did, not in the core of who they are. And our own identity as human beings are rooted in two areas. It, it, it's being able to discover our own, the, the goodness that we have as human beings made in God's image, made in God's image where, we, where we recognize our value that I, I have an inherent goodness because God has given me life and it's good to be alive, it's good to be a human being, I, I have goodness. And, that's, and that is foundational for our own psychological health. And the reason why a lot of people venture off into the, this, the, this comparison game and this, the, you know, the, the, this external seeking of attention and affirmation is because oftentimes people aren't grounded in their sense of their own goodness. They're not affirmed in their own being as being good and valued in and of itself. And so if you have like what we call an affirmation wound, you're gonna go out outside and seek affirmation. This is what happens with kids. I mean, you know, they, they, they go out and they're looking for approval. It, 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 it's, it, and, and part of that's not wrong, right? We need to hear from other people that we're good. But we need to hear not just that our activity is good, but that our very being is good. And that establishes a healthy psychological foundation. And when you have that healthy psychological foundation, then it allows you to rest secure in your own skin, to be comfortable in your own skin, to recognize that I have an inherent goodness, and yeah, I'm not, I might not have, I might not look, I might not look perfectly, I might not play sports perfectly, I might not do school perfectly, but that's okay. I have gifts, I have value as a human being, and I stand on that. And ultimately, it's recognizing not just that, but ultimately it's recognizing that I am a child of God, which is the ultimate core foundation of our very being. That the Father, the Father values me. The Father delights in me and how he had created me and how he has created me. Flaws and all, the Father delights in me. So that, that's like a one area of humble self-knowledge that we need to have. The other area of self-knowledge that we need to have is the fact that I commit sins. I offend God. You know, a big part of our struggle in this world today is a loss of a sense of sin, right? The Pharisees had no sense of their own. They, I, I, I think they don't, I, I don't think they had a sense of their own inherent worth. And I think, and obviously they, in their pride, they had no sense of their own brokenness and sinfulness because of their own inner insecurity. That's my, that's one of those is my, is a speculation on my part. The other one is a fact. They weren't aware of their own sinfulness because they didn't want to be because their value was locked up in this. I'm a Pharisee, <laughs> you know, like, look at me. I can, I can avoid eating certain foods, whatever. So anyway, the, the, the tax collector, however, recognized especially the second part. I don't have it all together. And, and why is it, why, why and, and, and I'll, I'll end with this, but, but like the reason why that, you know, we avoid sin and, and recognizing our own sinfulness and therefore lose our sense of sin, and, and, and you see this again in the culture a lot, in the media, is because sin brings shame or guilt. And, and we don't, number one, we don't like to feel that. And number two, um, sometimes an unhealthy sense of sin could lead to like, I'm a bad person, right? So we don't, in other words, we don't know how to deal with our own sinfulness because, because sin in one sense tears us down in our, and, and, and it can make us feel like you know, shame has to do with, I'm, I'm, ba I'm bad. 
Guilt has to do with I've done something bad. Shame has to do with I am bad, like in the core of my being, which goes against the very nature of how God made us. But most importantly, and how we overcome this is, and this is the beauty of God, and this is why we have this shrine and why God you know, reveals himself in scripture that he's merciful and why he appeared privately to St. Faustina to remind us that how, how merciful he is, that God loves us in and through our sinfulness. Meaning God doesn't reject us because we are sinners. God wants to enter into those sins, forgive them and heal them so we can be raised up and become the people that he's made us, to become the disciples that he's made us to be. And, and this, is, this is what I think the tax collector understood, right? He recognized that, number one, his own insufficiencies, his own mistakes, and his, therefore his need for God. The Pharisees, on the other hand, were, filled, filled, were full, full of themselves, and therefore they didn't think they needed God, at least implicitly. And so anyway... I just wanted to kind of expound on this in this manner because I think that this is at the core of our struggle um, as human beings in this day and age, right? It, it, it's that two, so the, but both of those areas, we struggle with uh, understanding that we are sinners be, to be able to acknowledge, you know, I commit sin and this is a sin. You know, the culture applauds sin, you know, and they applaud it because they don't want to call it out as a sin because they don't want to make people feel bad. Well, sometimes we need to feel bad because we've done bad, <laughs> meaning, meaning we need to feel the guilt and a little bit of shame, right? But we recognize, again, the mercy of God that wants to come and help to forgive us. And the other part is recognizing that our core identity is as a human being given the gift of life by God that is inherently good and that we have this call to being a child of God through grace. And that is the core of our value. And so I, I think that, and I, I think that um, if we're able to kind of live out those areas um, better in our life, if you will, by God's grace, it will allow us to stand more secure in the truth of who we are, to be comfortable, if you will, in our own skin. And therefore, when, you, when you're comfortable and you're secure, then you can move forward and perform according to how God has gifted you. But when you're caught up in a sense of insecurity and you know, you're, you're not, if you will, affirmed in the in your own in the, in the goodness of who you are, then it makes it's harder, and, and and this is where you know you you can get caught up in this comparison comparison game this snare of compare, and it, it's hard to get out of it. So anyway, may the Lord, in His mercy, uh, help us to recognize the truth of who we are, our own goodness, and especially that he will help us to recognize his goodness and that nothing can separate us from his love. Nothing can. And, this, and, the, and that's a beautiful thing. And that's where we find our strength and our capacity to live well in this life. Let us offer the Lord our petition. For all members of the church during this Lenten season, may God continue to help us grow in holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may God help them in fulfilling their roles with servants' hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For women in difficult pregnancies, may God provide them with the strength and support they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For we who worship and share community here, may the Holy Spirit help us recognize Christ in one another and in our neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, 
especially those who have no one else to pray for them. May they be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, as well as all those who call a right to us, may the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Father in heaven, you are always aware of our inherent dignity as human beings created in your image. Help us, Father, to receive, to be able to receive the goodness of that dignity, to be aware, to be aware, more aware of our own worth and value, just as who we are as humans. And help us, Father, to be aware that our own sinfulness does not deter you from recognizing our inherent value and dignity but rather help us to see that you are a father who is rich in mercy, always wanting to help us to overcome our sinfulness so that we can always seek to restore and to elevate by grace the truth of who we are. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Glory in his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Lord God, look with favor on the gifts we offer with grateful hearts on this memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, mother and disciple of your Son. Grant that through these gifts we may receive grace and wisdom in abundance, for these are beyond our human strength. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His mother, the Virgin Mary, in her glory, is rightly called blessed, for she received your son in her virginal womb. But she is even more blessed because, as a disciple of the incarnate word, she eagerly sought to know your will and faithfully carried it out. With the whole company of angels, we praise you with one voice. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, have and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of spiritual communion and thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
from the Diary of St. Faustina 627. When I complained to the Lord that he was taking my help away and that I would be alone again and would not know what to do, I heard these words, do not be afraid, I am always with you. Let us pray. Lord God, filled with the joy that comes from this sacrament, we ask that by imitating the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may be true disciples of Christ, eagerly hearing his words and putting them into practice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So just a reminder that we will be having again our 11 a.m. Um, Father Chris, back to seminary, um, teaching today. He will be here to teach on um, the problem and the tragedy, if you will, of human trafficking. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the, the Archangel, archangel defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be our, our protection against, against the wickedness and snares, snares of, the of the devil. May God, God rebuke him, we humbly pray. pray. And do, do thou, O Prince, Prince of the, of the heavenly, heavenly Host, by the power of God, God cast into hell, hell Satan, Satan and all, all the evil spirits, spirits who prowl about the world, world seeking the ruin of souls. souls. Amen. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Hopefully you were able to catch our latest episode of Living Divine Mercy on EWTN last Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, if you missed it, that's okay. We have this episode and all the episodes before it on our website, livingdivinemercy.org, that you can view anytime. This is a great show about God's mercy with inspiring stories of people living it in their lives. God bless you and hope to see you on that website.